Last time we tackled a few of the reasons why Mars is sad and why we shouldn't go there. Right now. We talked about how low Martian gravity could wreak havoc on a human being's health, how poisonous perchlorates permeate the regolith, and how it might be impossible to terraform the planet as well. Obviously, if you missed it, you should probably watch part one before watching this video. Because this time we're going to talk about how cosmic and solar radiation, the potential psychological problems our Mars settlers might experience, and how the annual cost of supplying a Mars colony might be even more reasons to reconsider going to the Red Planet. Right now. But first, be sure to drop a like on this video, comment all the reasons why I'm wrong and why Mars is awesome, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, which again, is set on Mars. And this is Science Get. Thanks to Earth's magnetosphere, the life here is spared from being bombarded by harmful solar and cosmic rays that, obviously, could kill us. The magnetic field also stops the solar wind from stripping our atmosphere until there's nothing left. And given the subject matter of these two videos, I'm sure you've guessed that Mars lacks this protective shield. As such, radiation is a prime concern for any potential trip to the Red Planet. 4.3 billion years ago, though, this wasn't the case. We have evidence that lakes and oceans adorn the Martian surface, but something happened stopping the core dead and causing the atmosphere to be stripped away over the course of 500 million years. There are still pockets of magnetic activity on Mars, but for all intents and purposes, its core is dead and no core means no magnetosphere, in case you hadn't figured that one out yet. Studies show that our high our potential... Oh. Really? Potential? I'd even say the word. Settlers would experience levels of radiation two and a half times greater than what they would experience here on Earth. In the developed world, humans experience radiation equal to 0.62 rads a year. The human body can withstand up to 200 rads, so long as that exposure is not dealt all at once. So stop your typing right now. We know that radiation doses of 200 to 1,000 rads received within a few hours are fatal, without succumbing to life-threatening illness. Living on Mars without some means of protecting our astronauts from the levels of radiation we've detected would lead to a multitude of health problems, including cancer, genetic damage, and a gruesome radiation sickness field demise. But the radiation on Mars' surface isn't the only source of radiation that the astronauts would have to deal with. Most estimates suggest that we could get to Mars within six months, so long as the launch window is timed just right. But a colony on Mars might need a constant schedule for delivering supplies. So what if NASA, the ESA, or SpaceX are forced to launch when Mars is further away from the Earth? Well, a study published in the Journal of Science in May of 2013 measured the radiation that a crew would be exposed to during a 360-day trip. The fatal amount of radiation was measured at 662 plus 108 millisieverts, or MSV for short. The study showed that up to 95% of this radiation would come from galactic cosmic rays, a type of radiation which is extremely difficult to shield against. If the trip took, say, 210 days, the amount of radiation astronauts would be exposed to would still be below the career limit established by NASA. However, while the radiation on Mars is a serious concern, there is a solution to this though admittedly one that might be a bit difficult to engineer. A Mars colony could find the same level of protection from the solar wind and galactic cosmic rays, can't forget those, that Earth and Venus enjoy by building their habitats beneath the surface. But this seems like an extreme solution, considering that balloon cities on Venus would automatically gain this shielding just by being in Venus's atmosphere, 50 kilometers above the surface where the temperatures are nice and comfortable. Watch our Venus video if you're confused. This radiation problem may have a potential solution right now, but the psychological problems our astronauts experience might be a serious problem, and one that can't be solved by a technological breakthrough, too. The astronauts we send to Mars will be forced to endure isolation on a magnitude which is impossible on Earth and maybe even on the ISS, considering they, at the very least, can see the Earth slowly rotating beneath them. 
And while it's true that there are plenty of remote places on the Earth where someone could get stranded and die from starvation, cold, or other elements, the Earth isn't actively trying to kill you. <laughs> well, unless you live in Australia. So in order to fully understand the kinds of psychological stressors our astronauts might face on Mars, scientists have been conducting extensive research into the effects of prolonged isolation. These experiments suggest that our potential... <sighs> okay, now you're just being petty. Astronauts on Mars would face at least four major psychological challenges. Challenges that would have the potential of creating ticking time bombs in our crew members. For a start, our colonists would be unable to interact physically with anyone besides their own colleagues. While that probably seems like no big deal after dealing with nearly a year-long isolation during a pandemic, it's not the same thing. Imagine if your lockdown was spent where literally going outside without a suit would mean certain death. And that's not taking into account all the other safety regulations and procedures you would have to observe. From making sure you don't come in contact with any perchlorates during EVAs or while taking the suit off, to mitigate surface excursions to ensure your radiation levels stay below acceptable levels. This kind of isolation would lead to mental illness in some of the astronauts who end up calling Mars their permanent home. Furthermore, prolonged isolation has been shown to lead to depression, anxiety, insomnia, boredom, something we know well from the pandemic, fatigue, again, 2020 is calling, cognitive impairment, and emotional instability. Wait, am I on Mars now? What is outside my box? Where am I? Even our most well-trained astronauts will suffer from these quote-unquote side effects. Living on Mars indefinitely means that our astronauts will be forced to live inside an artificial hab. Again, 2020. You know what? At least in 2020, we were able to go for walks and feel the air on our skin. If you lived on Mars, imagine if you were never again able to feel a breeze on your skin that wasn't created by an air conditioner. Or if you could never see one of Earth's sunsets again. In addition to this, the loss of privacy that these colonists would face could lead to bonus round, stress, fatigue, depression, and crippling anxiety. But perhaps the biggest challenge that a mission to Mars would face is the heavy burden that NASA, SpaceX, and the ESA might have to shoulder while attempting to resupply them. Remember how I said that we could get to Mars within six months if we launch within a certain time frame? Of course you do. Well, that window only happens once every 27 months. For those who don't know, a year on Earth is only 12 months. This means that resupplying our future settlers... Mother... I swear, that thing is sentient would have to depend on that very narrow launch window. While our goal is to make our Mars colony as self-sufficient as possible, and ideally, this would mean we wouldn't have to resupply them, right? Well, that's not necessarily realistic. For one, we're not really certain if we'll be able to completely cleanse perchlorates from Martian regolith. If our astronauts need any supplies at all, then the supply would have to be enough to last them 27 months until the next launch window opens up unless NASA or other private space companies are willing to bear the cost of a longer travel period. That's insane. The biggest problem that we're going to face here is that with our current technology, most of our spacecraft require 95% of their weight to consist of fuel. Supplying the Earth with various international shipping systems and routes is a challenge, but that is nothing compared to the logistics of trying to supply a planet that is 85.687 million miles away from the Earth. And that's not even considering what could go wrong with those supply ships, too. NASA deals with onboard equipment failures on their probes and spacecraft on a regular basis. Space is dangerous. Shout out to Mark Watney. And that's part of the job. So a catastrophic failure that could see a critical supply load meant to keep our astronauts alive for 27 months is a serious possibility that can't be ignored. Some of the common reasons for ship failures include destruction by micrometeorites, getting fried by a CME, and engine failure. There are more potential issues, but we're running out of time, and the computer is threatening to shut off my air. All these things could leave our astronauts without critical supplies for 27 months or longer if something goes wrong. Look, I know we all love the idea of being able to settle Mars, and scientists are going to find ways to mitigate the dangers we're talking about eventually. But while danger is part of the job, we also need to be smart about where we send our astronauts. No one wants to send somebody off to their death. 
And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that we should wait to go to Mars until we can make sure our astronauts are safe. We don't yet have a solution to the whole gravity issue yet. But once that's solved, hopefully Mars will become more viable. Anyway, I've rambled long enough and the computer is going to shut my air down if I don't shut up. So if you like this video, be sure to drop a like and comment how we might tackle any of the problems I've talked about in the future. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.